This week on In the Field, in Northern California on a gray, overcast day, shooting at Pelican Rock. Hi, everybody. My name is Scott Davenport, and thanks again for joining me on In the Field. Before I get into today's episode, a small request. If you have been enjoying these uh, In the Field and In Post episodes, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you've already subscribed, thanks very much. And if you've already subscribed, can you tell a friend? Uh, It's great to see the audience growing week after week, and that's a real big source of encouragement for me to keep coming back and making these videos again and again. With that, let's talk about today's shoot. So uh, I'm back in the California area. I'm on the beaches again, and this week uh, shooting just north of Davenport, California, at a uh, place, uh, well, it has a place called Pelican Rock, but it's part of the uh, Greyhound County State uh, Park. And um, it's uh, a nice location. Um, I had really high hopes for this shoot. Uh, It was a new location for me. I'd not been there before. And uh, the forecast was partly cloudy skies, and I live for those days because those are the ones you get the brilliant sunsets. And it was in an area called Davenport, California, and that should just be good for me, right? (laughs) Well, it didn't work out exactly how I'd hoped. Uh, Let me show you where this is on the maps, and then I'll show you some footage from the outing. So if you're not familiar with the San Francisco area, here's San Francisco, about halfway up California's coast. And down here in this area, a little north of Santa Cruz, is the city of Davenport, California. If I zoom in, there it is. A little farther north along Route 1, you get to an area called the Greyhound State Park. Let's switch over to the satellite mode. And let's see, that's the beach there. Let's zoom in a little bit farther and skim our way up the coast. We should be getting into the area now. Here we go. So this is so-called Greyhound Rock, and then there's this little patch of beach. And this is Pelican Rock here. So zooming in, and I'll switch to 3D. You can see there's quite a bit of a drop-off there. Uh, And so I had hoped the sun being coming, setting off to the west there, there was quite a number of opportunities. These nice rocks here. There's some nice rocks in the foreground here. You've got some areas of beach. And... um, yeah, this, uh, this just looked like a great place to get out and shoot. I've just arrived at Greyhound Rock, a little north of Davenport, California, and I'm still up on the bluffs taking a little scan here. The uh, partly cloudy forecast turned into completely cloudy uh, as I was driving over the, the hills in from Santa Cruz. It's just wall of clouds just rising up from the ocean, and now it's completely engulfed the sun. It's still an hour before sunset. So uh, I am going to be you know, milling about. I'm going to search for uh, compositions about shape, about form, thinking uh, monochrome. Uh, certainly I'm not going to be getting a lot of color in the sky today. It's down to the base of the beach, and here is the very large Greyhound Rock. And then scanning the beach, looking down toward the south, there's a couple of other smaller collections of rocks uh, on the other side of this little cove. Let me zoom in here a little bit. These look intriguing. One of them on the far right here actually has some type of archway, and uh, there's some other foreground things there. That's uh, interesting me a little more. That gives me um, more to play with as far as foreground, midground, background. Something I need to be aware of is the access point. Uh, it looks pretty passable right now. The tide is coming in, so uh, I'm going to walk over there check things out to make sure I don't cut myself off (laughs) Uh, because I still have at least another hour before uh, the sun's completely down. The good news is because the light's so dim, I may be able to get uh, my shooting done a little bit earlier than sunset since sunset's not going to yield me a whole lot. I've made my way down to this side of the beach here and uh, certainly there's much more interesting foreground subjects Uh, and even that pass to the other side of this hill here doesn't look too bad. I'm going to stand this side though and uh, play around with a few compositions. One thing I noticed with the water, there's a pretty nasty layer of you know, dirty foam on the top. What I'm hoping is that some of the longer exposures, even just dragging that uh, shutter for half a second or so, is going to smooth that out a bit and so it won't look as dingy in the photo. I framed up using this uh, large bit of you know, rock that's really been chipped away. It looks like artificially actually. 
as a foreground subject and just waiting for the waves to fill in this lower right corner just like it did now with the rocks in the background that's you know mid and background interest and so uh, now it's just a matter of watching the waves waiting for the right moment to hit the shutter and uh, hopefully get a few nice looking swirls in the ocean water taking a second composition now roughly the same thing I've just moved to higher ground and I'm angling the camera downward a little bit, so it's a little more like this. It'll give me a little more visibility in between the rocks where the water's playing around. And I'll just take a few frames and then move on to something else. Just a quick experiment. So on my drive there, it became evident really quickly that I wasn't going to get the sunset that I had hoped for. There was just this massive wall of clouds. Uh, even uh, before I, uh, I, you know, the footage you saw there, you saw everything looked just very, very gray. As I was coming up over the you know, local mountains heading towards Santa Cruz and then up north to Davenport, uh, you get these views where you can see the tops of the clouds. And it's just this, you know, 100, 150 foot wall of clouds that descend and land on the horizon. So there was you know, little chance that the sun was going to be able to peek through and survive that. Uh, but that meant my mind could shift its thinking even before I got to the location. So I'm not going to get a brilliant sunset. I'm going to be downplaying the sky. I'm going to be looking for things that are more about shape, about form, maybe swirls of water, things along that nature, possibly even going uh, as far as going to a black and white or you know, a split tone or more monochrome type photos. And that helps shape how you're going to approach your shoot. Uh, this is one of the things I talk about in my uh, 10 tips for shooting seascapes book. You know, the, the weather you can't control, but what you can control is how you approach the shoot and you can find something to go and, uh, and, and make a good photo. Let me show you a few of the images that I've taken. I haven't processed any of these yet, but uh, I can give you an idea of what I chose to shoot and what I uh, am probably going to work on first. So over here in Lightroom, here we go. Uh, I've got a bunch of them, and this is the Greyhound Rock here, and uh, I was trying to balance you know, something on the left of the frame, something on the right of the frame, something in the lower third, mid third, and then the upper third, and you know, just practicing composition. Uh, same thing here, something to lead into the frame. I mean, these are, you know, kind of ugly bits of seaweed, but this was, you know, compositional practice. Um, as much as Greyhound Rock gets the billing for this location and the name of the, the park, um, it's kind of boring looking. It's really just a big lump of rock. I found that the other side of the beach, the southern side, this off here is Pelican Rock, and if I zoom in here, let's see if my machine can keep up. You can actually see, yes, there are a bunch of pelicans that are hanging out on this rock, hence its name. But I found this to be a lot more interesting. Uh, again, using this as a you know, compositional study, changing up a little bit, changing my positions, and doing several shots to catch the water, doing different things, and then finally shifting for as the, this, this was close to sunset, you know, nothing broke in the sky. Uh, but just playing with the longer exposures. These actually feel a little underexposed, so there'll certainly be some work I need to do with the exposure on these. And I think looking through these, I'll probably work on this one first. I like this sweep of water, I like this crash of the wave, and depending on how this turns out, I may blend in elements of this photo, this wave here, and have this rock peek out a little bit more. This is a little more buried in the water. So the, the tip of the week is to stay nimble. I've said this before and in the field, and uh, it was never more true uh, than on this shoot. You can't control the weather, like I said, but what you can control is your approach to the shoot, what you decide to seek out. It might not be what you wanted or had planned for, but there's always something to be found. And uh, yeah, that's really, that is the tip. Just, you know, don't get discouraged. Uh, you know, this it, experiment, try something different. Uh, just make, make the effort, go out and shoot. And ultimately, it's supposed to be fun, right? That's the reason we probably all started making photos. We found enjoyment from it. And uh, these kinds of opportunities, um, I guess that's a really good word, opportunities. Looking at, you know, the weather didn't work out how I wanted. It became an opportunity to try something else, to do something different, or just to reconnect with the joy of going out with a camera. 
That is it for this week in the field. Uh, I should be back very soon with the in post on these photos, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I think as soon as I'm done recording this, I'm going to go start processing some images. In the meantime, if you have questions, please reach out to me. You can contact me through my website. Uh, if you're a new viewer, thanks very much. I hope you come back and uh, enjoy some uh, future episodes, and there's a bunch more on the channel that you can check out as well. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Thank you.